Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to this evening's presentation. Today we're going to have, this evening we're going to have a health nugget. And before we begin, let us yet again uh, begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we find ourselves again on our knees asking for your presence, Lord. For you have said to us to acknowledge you in all our ways, and here we are, Lord, acknowledging you that we are about to learn some benefits about lemon and the sweet and sour bits of life. And we ask that you please bless and that you please speak to, to us. And we ask that you please use me, Lord, as an open, empty vessel, and that all that may come out may be for your honor and glory. Bless us this evening and be with those who are also watching with us live. In your name I ask and pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, welcome. I feel like it's been a while since I've been up here. However, today we're going to be talking about lemons. It's a well-known fruit used in the broad spectrum of the culinary arts. Um, those who cook... Can anyone name a couple items that we put in, that we add lemon into? Milk or buttermilk. Is there a mic? Sorry. Oh, here's one. Mm -hmm. There's one right here. Oh. I should be hearing not only female but also male since to it make, is necessary for all of us to learn how to cook. Go to, ahead. to make buttermilk, you can use lemon and milk. Buttermilk. Okay, there, there goes chemistry. Cheese. Cheese. Well, vegan cheese. Hey. Hey, Larry. Saute vegetables brings out the flavor. Okay, thank you, Miss Donna. Use it for salad dressing. Correct. Okay, those mic. are really good. Okay. In the islands, we make a real nice good lemonade with lemon. <laughs> All righty. I use it to make fruit sauce. Mm. Fruit sauce. Yeah. Fruit sauce. Nice. So as we can tell, or as we have heard, lemons are very versatile. You can use it in baked goods. Mr. Har mentioned, you know, buttermilk reaction. That's chemistry right there. You can use it as a garnish. Lemon pie. Lemon pie. Mm. All righty. All righty. Okay, well, we're, we'll get to that. Um, another thing is a... We're in the season of, what, festivities and gathering of families and friends, and so therefore, there's a lot of sweets going around, right? So today, hopefully, we'll also learn some benefits that will help with the side effects of consuming too much sugar. Okay? All righty. <laughs> Let me continue, okay? So as mentioned, we use it in drinks, sauces, dressings, uh, added to our savory food and sweet food, but it's also used in chemicals too. Okay, and so the flavors are described as tangy, sweet, sour, acidic, tarty, and oh, yes, okay, let's continue. Citron history. So, the history of lemons is not too clear. However, based on scientific research and genomic sequencing or study, it suggests that citruses descended in the wild around Asia, um, and lemons, along with oranges, grapefruits, limes, mandarins, and all other citruses are hybrids derived from other ancestral fruits. And so fruits that we consume on the daily may or may not be organic. And what I mean by that is it's not in its original state. Hence, the lemons and the other citruses are hybrids. So it's a mix of between two different fruit. Um, it's suggested that lemons are a cross between a wild citron and a semi-domesticated variety of bitter orange. Okay. And it's also believed that to be native to South Asia and or linked to Northeastern India, and lemons have made their way down to Southern Italy around 200 BC. And so this is just a little bit of history to educate ourselves. Um, let's see. Also, in 700 BC, it is believed that citron was the first of the family, of the citrus family, to reach the Mediterranean. And remains of lemons were found in a 2,500-year-old garden, a Persian garden near Jerusalem and through modern, modern Israel. And so it's not only 
written down in articles that lemons were present, but it's also found in the soil. Uh, it's remains. And then in the 10th century, lemons were not widely cultivated, nor did it seem that the Romans used it for cooking. But it was the wealthy elite Romans kind of prized it as, treasured it for decoration in their garden. So it was not, it was known for its medicinal properties slowly, but at first it was really known for it being beautiful and having a pleasant odor and odor, and also it has a symbolic use and due to its rarity because it wasn't cultivated that much uh, at that time. And so in the 15th century, that is when the first substantial cultivation began in Europe. And in 1493, that is when lemon is later introduced into the Americas. That's when Christopher Columbus carried seeds to Hispanolia Island, and the, there the lemons are planted. And so obviously the Spanish conquest throughout the New World helped spread lemon seeds further on. And so in 1751 to 1768, we find that lemons eventually grow in California, and then further on in our history, increased planting um, comes to Florida and California. And so... Um, Lemon trees really love the warm climate. So, the, the ellipsoidal yellow fruit of the lemon tree was initially used as an ornamental plant and in medicine. It was, for example, prized for its medicinal virtues in the palace of the Sultan of Egypt and Syria in the years between 1174 and 1193. In the 18th century, scurvy was increasingly becoming a problem for the health of sailors on long sea voyages where they had limited access to fresh fruit. Although the connection between the disease and vitamin C was not fully understood, Scottish doctor James Lynn developed the theory that citrus fruits cured scurvy. A pioneer of naval hygiene in the Royal Navy, Lind conducted one of the first ever clinical trials on seamen suffering from scurvy to show the addition of lemon juice to their diets had a positive benefit to health. So that's just a little history. The lemon tree can grow up to 10 meters, but it's more common in its shortest form. How can you recognize it? That's pretty simple. From its crown full of wide branches, covered with shiny dark elongated leaves, the lemon trees can be decorated with white fragrant flowers or, depending on the season, with wonderful golden fruits. Anyhow, they have the power to transport us immediately to warm, sunny destinations. Maybe you've noticed it at the local fruit and vegetable market. There are so many lemon cultivars. They can have a pointed or rounded bases. They can be more or less large or more or less juicy. Since the lemon tree prefers warm climates, the major production in our country is located in California, Arizona, and Florida. Okay, and so today, as we've mentioned earlier, it is used throughout the world for both culinary arts and not only culinary art purposes, but also in cleaning. Um, okay, so has anyone ever used more than just the lemon itself? So, yes, uh, other than the rind and the seed and the pulp, has anyone ever used the leaves? And yes, go ahead. Can you explain what you used it for? The leaves is very common in the in the islands. They make tea also mm. with the, with the with the leaves. Mm. Nice, and oh, that's actually very similar from our country as well. You just go out to your lemon tree, grab the leaves, rinse it, of course, and then you just put it in a pot of water, and it's called la moli. And it also adds a flavor to, I know in the Hispanic culture, they have like a milk rice. Um, I forgot what it's called, but we have that same version. And yes. Thank you. Can you say the mic, please? They call it arroz con leche. Yes, arroz con leche. Yeah, my, my granddad um, used it to flavor milk for me. Mm, see, there you go. It brings lots of flavor. My grandfather, he used the leaves to flavor milk for me. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> yes. Alrighty. 
Do you have a comment on the leaves for the tea? Mm -hmm. Kind of like what MK was saying. We, when we use the, um, when we make uh, milk, we add the lemon leaves. Mm -hmm. But on, not only that, we usually put it in our porridges when we have mm -hmm. like cocoa rice or coconut mm -hmm. rice. Mm -hmm. The leaves, the leaves. Yes. So what do the leaves do for the milk? It gives it that right. lemony aroma. It adds a, a really, really nice flavor to it. In the milk? Yes, mm -hmm. in the milk. It's mentioned further, but it has this constituent called limonene. limonene. Yes, and so that is the chemical compound that is in charge of its fragrance. Mm -hmm. All right, and so the rind, the peel packs has a high, the peel has a high amount of fiber and vitamin C contains bioactive compounds that provide numerous health benefits. It has D-limonene and antibacterial properties. And D-limonene is just a compound, oh, like I mentioned, that gives a lemon its, its fragrance. But the lemon peel, as it contains antibacterial properties, it helps to inhibit micro, microorganism growth. And researchers have identified four compounds in lemon peel that have a powerful antibacterial properties, and effectively fights common oral disease-causing bacteria. Mike, please, brother. Thank you. It also, lemon peel also helps to kill a disease called alopecia, a skin disease normally mm. where the hair falls out. Mm -hmm. Scrape that, you put it on it, it helps the hair to grow back. Yes. Mm -hmm. The skin. Alopecia. <laughs> I, I hadn't heard that of it as a cure for alopecia. Yeah, and also it's actually a remedy for when you have, I believe, dandruff. You kind of wash your hair with lemon juice, and it will sting, but it's a good type of sting. And it will, if you do that, you know, every time you take a shower, it will help eliminate the dandruff. All right, some good, some good stuff. All right, and so you know the rind. The rind is also the zest that baking recipes call for, or even just regular savory foods. Go ahead, brother. Just one little addition. Um, back home, some persons use it to help reduce body odor. When they go to have a mm. shower, they rub it mm -hmm. over the armpits. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is true. Wait, with the, the, the mic, please. <laughs> young children who start in puberty, mm. you know, before giving them underarm deodorant, mm -hmm. you put that under their arms. Mm -hmm. so yes. It helps the odor. Yes. And not only with the odor, but especially those who have like dark spots. Now, mind you, lemon plays a role, as we'll continue, of preventing oxidation when it comes to your apples. And so when you add that lemon to any dark spots on your body, that actually, you know, helps and it's very beneficial because dark spots it's due because of dark spots like for example on on the under the armpits it's due to not enough air and plus it's it's always closed you know so no oxygen all right so as i was saying the zest that recipes call for um it's very it, there's a reason why it calls for the zest not just for decoration but it's because it it contains loads of natural oils, and it's less acidic and tart in the, in the zest, and it's, it brings out more of the flavor. All right. You know, quickly, as you, as you, have, as you, as you have on the screen, the antibacterial properties, that, that would explain why the rhyme does what it does mm. for the disease alopecia. Mm. Mm. Yes, thank you for pinpointing that out. And so, as mentioned, the rind is rich in an essential oil, which helps the gastrointestinal tone and turns out to be useful after a hearty banquet, or on the contrary, if you have a lack of appetite. Lemon juice is able to lift your mood thanks to its exciting scent, but it also contains vitamin B and an important amount of vitamin C, mineral salts, mineral salts, and potassium. For the same reason, it performs a protective function on the body besides fighting sodium excess and, and regulating kidney function. 
Lemons, glycosides, and flavonoids reinforce capillaries and improve circulation. Capillaries are just your veins. And so, let's see. Okay, the leaves, as we mentioned before, the lemon leaves, rich in limonene and terpene, compounds with calming and anti-spasmatic properties are also recommended, rec recommended apologies, against palpitations, insomnia, headaches, and asthma. Yes, and so, but it's vitamin C which is truly responsible for lemon's benefits. It helps with iron absorption and legumes and green leafy vegetables in order to counteract anemia. It boosts the immune system and prevents kidney stones and improves skin health, as mentioned. And what everyone doesn't know is that you can find the largest amount of vitamin C in the peel, which unlike the juice, is also rich in fiber and calcium. In the peel, there is also limonene, a valuable molecule with an unmistakable scent. According to many studies, its anti-inflammatory properties can prevent tumor growth, a single fruit with fruitful benefits. Mm. Oh. Oh, yes. Lemon water is good, too. Yes, that is correct. Um, it is often encouraged to drink warm lemon water in the morning because that actually helps not only warm up your system, but the lemon plays a role of getting your system ready for the day in terms of the pancreas and the digestive tract. And so there's lots of benefits there. Alrighty, okay. An ingredient in lemonade, soft drinks, and cocktails. Lemon juice is also used in marinades for fish, where it neutralizes amino acids to delay the onset of decay. That's just a fact, okay? I'm not encouraging anything, but I'm just letting you know what takes place ke chem chemistry-wise with lemon, okay? In meat, the acidic nature acts to partially break down tough collagen fibers and thus tenderizes it. Lemon juice is also used as a short-term preservative on those foods that tend to oxidize and turn brown after being sliced, such as apples, bananas, and avocados. Known as enzymatic browning, enzymatic browning, the juice's acidity acts to denature the enzymes that cause the color change. Alrighty, so this leads us to our presentation. Um, MK, could I have you just help me with this? Real quick. So what we've prepared today, thank you. Alrighty. Thank you. So what we've prepared today is a lemon syrup, and depending how you want it with the temperature, uh, well, let me just explain. So how it, how it goes about is your ingredients include four cups of water, three lemons, four drops of peppermint essential oil, four drops of lemon essential oil, half cup honey, one tablespoon ginger juice. Now, you put this together in a pot and you bring it to simmer, and that's allowing all your, uh, your ingredients to come together. And so after that, you can either let it sit and cool in the fridge, or you could put it in the freezer and it will, you can create, you can um, make cough drops into it. Okay, and so here we have our pre-made mixture and ginger juice. So I didn't have ginger juice. You could, you know, juice your ginger or you could add everything into a blender. Hence, that's why you see the white foam on top. It's the, the pulp of the ginger because okay, I did not strain it and I wanted to keep the fiber. And... Another thing is, oh yes, in God's Pharmacy, page 60, 64, we have some information on lemons, and we have a couple recipes that include lemons on, from page 65 and page 66. Alrighty. So, another thing, if you don't have essential oils, such as the peppermint essential oil, you can just use the decaffeinated mint medley tea, and you can add that into your, your, your liquid. And also have lemon ginger here for an option. All right, so let's try it. So it's a bit liquidy, but you can always put it in the freezer and it will, refrigerator, apologies, 
and it will thicken up that way, especially with the, the honey in, in it. You guys want to try it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. While you're doing that, I have a question. All right, Doc. Why do they use lemons in manufacturing cars? Because I had a friend who bought a car, and he said, I got a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> a lemon. I'm sorry, I'm actually lost. I don't... I don't think that I'm in your generation. <laughs> wait, wait, can you put the mic, Papa Jack? But anyway, it's a phrase. When you get a, I mean, it's no good. So you got jip, so you got oh, a lemon. See. But that's a good question. Why they associate with a lemon? Probably because it's bitter. Ah. Or known to be bitter. Okay. Thank you for Talk. educating me. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, but you know, as we learn about, yes, the lemons is known for its bitterness and its tart. However, it depends on how you prepare it. Depends what you put it in, and you could make it sweet. That makes sense. It becomes sweet. How is it? Not that bad, huh? Yes. <laughs> it's supposed to help soothe your throat, especially with that ginger. So you can put this on pancakes? Ooh, very bold. Yes, I suppose you can. You're welcome. <laughs> So all those little pieces that you see in there, that's just coming from the ginger because, again, we didn't strain it. We want it to keep the fiber and the nutrients. So it's just ginger, lemon, and... Yep, right there. Everything right there. Yeah, and you can add your tea bags to give it a little bit more flavor. All righty. Um, I don't think so. Oh. Can you repeat the question? Sounds yummy. Yes, I think it is yummy. Take this. For medicinal purposes. I'm, mm. I'm cave. You, huh? Go ahead. You don't, you don't know? Well, I'm trying to Call think because, because of the honey, the sweetness. Not all diabetics can intake honey. That's the thing. Oh, very good. Just want to know. But this is the raw honey. Does that matter? No. no. We're out of Doc's honey. That's why I'm asking. Ooh. Even Doc's honey diabetic. Ooh. <laughs> all righty. Well, I guess we can comment on that later. I have to think about that. Sounds, yes, sounds yummy. Yes, it is yummy. MK, do you have a comment? As it pertains to if diabetics can have honey, because I know that not all can intake honey. It's best for them to stay away from the honey. Mm -hmm. um, if they really want to have something sweet, stevia, mm -hmm. um, green powdered stevia would be their, their mm -hmm. better option. Mm -hmm. You're right. And plus, I believe if it were for your throat, you can find another recipe that pertains to your throat that excludes the honey. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ginger, ginger yes. Just, Just using it alone will work. Yeah, ginger, garlic. Ginger, only. garlic. That is true. Mm -hmm. Iolic. Okay. <laughs> Mike's? All righty. <laughs> Get the mic, Doc. We have a reading about spices 
Uh, where were we reading from? My uh, uh, councils on diet and food, mm. and it said, and it lists ginger as a spice, didn't it? So that we should need. Mm. Okay, we, we should. Well, in context, you're trying to start something, dog. Right. Huh? I don't think it mentioned she, she, ginger. She this ginger as a spice. So it was. Look Mike. it up. Look it up. I, I want right, to know. Mike. Okay. Do you have it? Do you have the statement? I don't have the exact statement. Okay. All right. My, well. my understanding of the statement is that she was talking about it being used as, you know, just to excite the food. It was being used as an appetite. It was being used to please the appetite instead of being used medicinally or other. So in context of what yeah, maybe I don't, maybe I don't, your, your I don't actually have any internet in this room right now. Yes, yeah, so let us continue thinking. with the London presentation. Says. All right, Doc, we can we can answer your yes after. Thank you. All righty, so lemon. It's perfect for soft lemon scented desserts, delicious creams, veggie meat based dishes with a citrusy seasoning, but also with fish and vegetables. Vegetables, okay? Lemon is a super versatile ingredient always available, which is always available, which is true. Uh, you can apply lemon into the beauty routine, such as Ms. Donna mentioned, uh, for the underarms or also for the, the hair, the head. Lemon can be a precious ally for DIY beauty treatments. Its astringent properties are used to make face masks for acne or to clear blemishes and skin marks. For the same reason, it can be used to naturally whiten your teeth, although citric acid's misuse and abuse can affect and damage tooth enamel. Yes, I remember when people used to have a phase of taking lemon shots and... <laughs> yes, okay. Alrighty, so as I said, I remember people used to have a phase on social media where they would take lemon shot, you know, every single day. But also keep in mind that that citric acid can also break down your, te your teeth enamel. Yes, so there needs to be a balance to everything. All right? Okay. Continued, as a natural antibacterial, it can also be used as an occasional facial cleanser. And again, it makes your nails and hair look brighter and stronger. <laughs> Around the home, the internet is full of DIY recipes for natural household cleaners and, its dis and disinfectants made from lemon juice. Its degreasing and polishing power will surprise you. How to treat yourself with lemon. When you suffer from heartburn or stomach heaviness, there's nothing better than a nice cup of lemon infusion. All righty. Okay. So that kind of ends our, well... And everything we do, we must always include Christ, right? Amen. And so we can apply the lemon's bitter and sweet qualities to our spiritual life. How? Well, following God sometimes leads to bitter waters. And we've learned from previous, previous prayer meetings that following God does not come without its challenges. Safe, And we, let us remember going back to when God had freed the Israelites. And uh, let us go back. And so it says, safe and sound on the other side of the Red Sea, life didn't get more manageable for the Israelites. Instead, life presented new faith-rattling challenges. Just three days later, the Israelites were dying of thirst and in desperate need of water. So when they arrived at Mar Mara, only, which means bitterness, only to realize the water was undrinkable, they panicked and laid into Moses. Moses in turn cried out to God, and the Lord instructed Moses to throw a specific tree into the water, and as a result, the water became drinkable. You find this in Exodus 15, verse 25. Here's the next picture. Water that once tasted bitter turned into something sweet, thanks to God's provision of a tree. I can think of another tree that's sweet in my life. Can you? In 1 Peter 2, verses 20, verse 24, Lord, please bless your word. In your name I ask and pray, amen. 1 Peter 2, verse 24, it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, 
that we, being dead to sins, should live unto a righteousness, by whose stripes ye, ye were healed. Just as God used a tree to turn Israel's bitter water into something sweet, so does God use the cross to make the bitter waters sweet, to make life's bitter waters sweet. We're never without hope as Christ followers, even when situations are hard to swallow. When we allow the gospel to saturate the hard things of life, even the undrinkable things become drinkable. Following God sweetens the journey. Salvation isn't to avoid isn't salvation isn't a pass to avoid difficult things. Our journey, just like Israel's journey, is full of challenges, temptations, and heartache. But just as Israel had reasons to trust God, so do we. Just as they had promises to cling to, so do we. Just and when we cling to those promises while holding fast. Christ, even the most bitter circumstances can give way to something sweet. Um, a renowned Christian author once said, my youngest son asked the other day if miracles still happen. My instant response was, yes, of course. Then why don't we see them, he countered. I think we do see them, I said, but some of the biggest miracles I've experienced haven't been on the outside. They've taken place inside of me. I forgave when I didn't think I could forgive. I persisted when I didn't think I could go on. I loved when I didn't think I could love, when I didn't think love was possible. And I experienced joy when joy seemed unlikely. Now, listen, friend, if you've been patiently waiting or anxiously waiting for God to part the waters in a particular situation, I want to encourage you to try another tactic. Throw the gospel on top of that raging sea. Let God sweeten the water instead of getting rid of it. Surrender the situation to him and saturate your mind with scripture. And so there may be seasons where we find ourselves at Mara, dying of thirst and plagued with bitter water. But it isn't because God is unkind. It's to help us see that God can make even make the bitter things in life sweet. We tend to hope and pray for God to part the waters to give us new circumstances, but sometimes the bigger miracle is finding that bitter water is drinkable because God is still good. The gospel is still true, and Jesus is still here. There is no one like our God. Sometimes he parts the water, and sometimes he simply makes it drinkable. But either way, if we cling to Jesus, we'll experience God's faithful hand. Amen. 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 And so that concludes um, this evening's presentation. If there is no questions or comments, I want to thank you for joining us and choosing to be here with us today. All righty. Oh. Okay. Yes, thank you for choosing to be with us here today. Okay. Seems that we have moved on over. Doc, you want to go ahead and... Doc, using spies. She just showed I, she, she showed me that statement. Okay. You can read it. No. Read it. Can you read it with the mic? In regard to our using spice, I plead not guilty. We have not had spice in our house for 10 years except a little ginger, which we have always used to some extent. Okay. So we look for a balance when we read, read the spirit of prophecy. What does she say about ginger in, uh, in other places? Uh -huh. <laughs> so let's read them all. You, you know, that's like a Sunday keeper you know, trying to teach Doc Sunday. Blackburn. And they just read only the Sunday scriptures that have said nothing. Doc Blackburn. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> Dr. Blackburn, maybe you should do a God's Pharmacy on ginger. How about that? No, no I'm just, I'm wondering. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So let's read every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah, right. Let's not suppress that which we have already decided Correct. we don't want to do. Yes. Read all of God's word. Correct. So we need to educate ourselves I, I in the meantime. Right, Doc? I agree with what he says. If other writings can be found... Where says something different, and then we know that there's 
the pen of inspiration is not contradicting in any way. Mm. You get a so if there if there's others writing which show something as well ginger, then we need to find that and have the balance. That's what we were doing on this week. Mm. But Larry doesn't seem to want to pull up those statements. <laughs> yes, it, it calls for we're another time. We're suppressing the word of God. <laughs> All righty then. That concludes it. Hopefully in the future we'll be looking forward to Dr. Blackburn doing the Little God's Pharmacy on Ginger to educate ourselves just a little bit more. All right. With all the facts. Thanks. With all the facts. Amen. 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 All righty. All righty. Put that statement up there. Okay. And then refuse it. But that statement didn't have anything to do with lemon. Somebody put that statement up there. But we refuse to put opposing statements up there. That is not the spirit of Christ. Okay. The opposing statement here. You and I, Larry, are talking about ginger. Mm. All righty. Ginger. Don't use ginger. Shall we pray? I think we yes. should pray. Yes. yes. <laughs> Let us pray. I think we should pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for hearing and answering our prayers, for bringing us here thus far. Thank you for blessing the presentation that we were able to learn more than a thing or two. And we ask that as we listen in, that you'll please encourage us to do our own research and search it out for ourselves, Lord. And I pray that you'll please go before us as we begin a new week and that we may reunite in your love next Sabbath. We thank you again for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us. And please be with our online viewers and those that are heading home. And we ask that you please help us to reflect on what we've learned today and to savor it and that we may apply it to our lives. In your name I ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, Thank you. you. Don't forget School. I'm Dr. Thomas Jackson, Director of Meet Ministry. The School of Gospel Health Evangelism, which runs from March the 10th through June the 30th, 2024, can best be classified as an extremely intense, comprehensive, yet surprisingly simplistic educational experience. This course trains students to be gospel medical missionaries. Subjects to be studied includes Bible training, God's plan for the preservation and restoration of health, ministry of healing, medical missionary home health care, Christian lifestyle consulting, God's nutritional plan, medical terminology, agriculture, nature's rational remedies, literature evangelism, hydrotherapy, and massage and understanding the creator's masterpiece. 
Ultimately, this course provides a deeper understanding of the greatest medical book ever written, the Bible. We're located in the country in Huntingdon, Tennessee, on 120 acres. Students will be surrounded by sights and sounds conducive to learning and spiritual growth. The cost of this course, $5,500. This includes tuition, room, board, and two vegan meals per day. There's a non-refundable application fee for $250. The application must be completed along with the application fee by January 8th. Upon acceptance, the student is required to make a deposit of one half of the tuition cost by January the 15th. And the final tuition is due on or before February the 19th. For more details about the curriculum, visit us at www.meetministry.org and click on Training and School gospel health evangelist. If you still have questions, please contact us at 731-244-2140. We look forward to meeting you. May God continue to richly bless you.